Everyone loves Mega Pokemon. They're just really cool upgrades to existing fan favorites, like Absol, Scizor, and Fly. Actually, we don't really talk about that one. My point is, Mega Pokemon were one of the most well-received generational gimmicks Game Freak has ever come up with. These Mega Pokemon were so popular that they're actually the only gimmick that managed to escape its home generation by being present both in Generation 6's Kalos and Generation 7's Alola. Beyond that, Megas are so popular that they still remain a mechanic in the spin-off games like Pokemon Go and Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. Many players expected them to be a core mechanic of all games going forward, but in Generation 8, Game Freak decided to bench the whole mechanic in favor of Dynamax? I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of Megas, but I would have traded them for Dynamax any day. That mechanic was garbage. And we haven't seen them return since then. Well, that was until the announcement of Pokemon Legends ZA, or Z2A, or ZAR, or something. Anyways, at the end of the trailer, we were shown the Mega Evolution symbol, basically confirming that it'll be a mechanic in the game. While the Legends games are considered main series games by Game Freak, it should be noted that Legends Arceus lacked any sort of multiplayer, including PvP, which happens to be the only place where Megas are somewhat controversial. While many players enjoy Megas in battles, there are also some who believe that Megas aren't healthy for competitive play. So today, let's discuss whether or not Megas should return to Generation 10 and beyond. If you enjoy this video at any point in time, be sure to leave a like and subscribe because I make tons of competitive Pokemon content just like this. As a matter of fact, you should just subscribe right now because I have a playlist full of content for you to check out right after this video. And if you think you're already subscribed, do me a favor and double check because only about half of my viewers actually are. So, Megas. What exactly do they do mechanically? Obviously, even casual players know that Mega Pokemon get a design overhaul and usually get a new ability or typing. But when we check under the hood, what's really going on? Well, all Pokemon have a base stat total, which is simply the sum of all their stats. Take, for example, Binette, who has a base stat total of a measly 455. Upon Mega Evolution, all Megas gain 100 more base stat points, meaning that Mega Binette has a total of 555. This new total is distributed among the Pokemon's stats to rework how strong, bulky, and fast they are. This, in tandem with the new ability, will basically change the entire Pokemon's identity from a battling perspective. In Binette's case, it goes from a very weak physical attacking ghost type with a sleep immunity to a very powerful physical attacker that can spam priority Burn, Taunt, and Destiny Bond. Another pretty interesting example of an old Pokemon getting a buff through Megas would have to be Mega Mawile. While before Mawile had the best single type combination in the game of Fairy Steel, it just didn't have the stats to be useful at all. Meanwhile, Mega Mawile maintains that incredible typing, but becomes pretty pretty bulky and gains huge power on top of 105 base attack stat, meaning that it has an effective attack stat of 678, much higher than any other Pokemon in the game. Clearly, Megas are a great opportunity to buff old, weaker Pokemon. The issue arises when Game Freak realizes that Megas, for already popular strong Pokemon, would sell a lot of plushies. That's how we ended up with the likes of Mega Mewtwo, Salamence, Gengar, and of course, Rayquaza. All of these designs are sick though, right? Yeah, 100%. I dropped $30 in a plush of this dude. But from a game balance perspective, it completely defeats the positives of using Megas to buff weaker Pokemon by raising the power level of the game way above where it was before. How is my man Mega Beedrill supposed to click the world's strongest U-turn when it's getting one shot by Mega Scizor's bullet punch? Who decided Scizor needed a Mega? It's literally one of the best Pokemon in Gen 5 singles. I guess what I'm trying to say here is that I really love the idea of Mega Pokemon, but there's just no way Game Freak will have the restraint to only give them to the Pokemon that need a buff in power. If we want to take a look at how Megas have fared in a competitive landscape, we can see that Pokemon which were already historically strong that received Megas are somewhat overrepresented in the results. Salmons went from a powerful Dragon type with access to Intimidate to a powerful Dragon type with access to Intimidate that can instantly get faster, bulkier, stronger, and turn Double Edge into a flying type move, granting it a boost with Stab. With stats like that, it's no wonder Mega Salmons was a really strong pick in early and mid VGC 2016, even among the threats like Primal Kyogre and Groudon. The exception to this rule would definitely have to be Mega Kangaskhan though. Kangaskhan is historically not that strong in competitive Pokemon, but Mega Kangaskhan in Generation 6 was ridiculously strong. Not only did it have access to the phenomenal pure normal typing with Stab on Fake Out and Return, but it had this exclusive ability of Parental Bond, which made it so all of Mega Kangaskhan's single target moves would hit twice, once at full power from Kangaskhan, and once again at half power from the little baby that pops out of its pouch. Besides all of the negatives I'm gonna state about Mega Pokemon, I do need to put it out there. The designs are absolute bangers. I mean, having the Mega 
have the baby pop out and fight with you. That was like a stroke of pure genius. I, I can't overstate that at all. Getting back to the point, this ability means that the move return goes from a 102 base power move to 153 base power move before or stab and bypasses both focus ash and sturdy you can see how this might be a bit much from a game balance perspective right bear in mind that this also at one point had access to the move power up punch which was effectively a swords dance that would chunk pokemon for decent damage since kangaskhan would get the boost twice this pokemon was so powerful that it was on six of the top eight teams at the 2015 world championships and was nerfed in generation 7 by losing power up punch and having parental bond second hit nerfed to 25 percent power instead of 50 percent as a side note i should really use my platform to clear up some misinformation regarding the 2015 VGC season. The Chalk Core of Cresselia, Heatran, Amoongus, Landorus, and Mega Kangaskhan wasn't actually terribly popular in any of the tournaments leading up to Worlds 2015. This team broke out around the time of Worlds and seriously popped off at the event in the hands of a few Japanese players who decided to run it. Which is why if you zoom out from just top 8, you'll see it kind of destroys the narrative that all VGC players use the same teams even nearly 10 years ago. Take a look, even just outside of top 8 we can see a Mega Venusaur and Scrafty. I don't know, that's just food for thought. But while one Mega Pokemon might not truly be over centralizing, it should be noted that Mega Pokemon were unique in the way they limited team building. Where Z moves could be run by any Pokemon, Dynamax could be activated even on niche picks like Durant, and Terrastalization truly allows for bottom tiers like Articuno to have their moment in the limelight, Megas were a pretty specific pool of Pokemon. You see this, at least one or two of these Pokemon would be on your team or you'd be at some kind of disadvantage during the battle. While some might say that this isn't really a negative since you could just choose to not use a Mega Stone on your team, it truly is disadvantageous to not have one of these Pokemon. They sort of function as a team captain or just like the cornerstone of your team. Teams with Mega Charizard Y would support Charizard to allow it to have the proper speed control to click Heat Wave safely and pair it with chlorophyll abusers like Venusaur to sleep opposing threats. Yes, you could alternatively use Ninetales for this role, but Charizard Y was practically a mini legendary Pokemon on your team, so you'd have to be crazy to choose Ninetales over it. Even niche Megas like Mega Manectric were integral for allowing their team to function in a very specific way, since these Pokemon effectively have two abilities. On lead, Manectric would be able to provide support for the Tapu Fini by redirecting electric moves into itself with Lightning Rod, then, when the time is right, Mega Evolve to intimidate an opposing Kartana and allow Tapu Fini to live the hit. Really, Mega Pokemon weren't optional if you were trying to win consistently. I know I'm being a bit of a downer with Mega Pokemon, but I'm just giving my perspective on it from a competitive player's point of view. So let me get through this last point and I promise we'll talk about some of the positive ways Megas can be used in the franchise. Okay. Stick with me here. Mega Pokemon were bad for game balance in the long run. This is because the existence of Megas were sort of a bandage for an issue caused by Power Creep. Mega Pidgeot was a fairly okay Pokemon, and as long as Megas remained in the game, no one would really complain about regular Pidgeot being trash since you could always just Mega Evolve it. I mean, it kept me satisfied. But it's not realistic for every Pokemon to gain a Mega Evolution even over the course of 10 or more generations. Mega Pokemon were given to bottom tiers like Ampharos and Pidgeot, granting them temporary viability for two generations, but once they were removed, these two went back to being completely unviable. Had Game Freak just decided to give these two flat stat buffs, move pool buffs, or even ability buffs not tied to a generational mechanic, those buffs would remain to this day. And it seems that Game Freak for a period of time adopted this philosophy, that there wasn't a need to buff old Pokemon since they'd probably eventually get a Mega Evolution as long as they got around to it. You can see that nowadays, without Megas in the game, Game Freak is more open to giving huge buffs to older Pokemon like Shiftry who gained Wind Rider, Empoleon who gained a new ability in Competitive instead of Defiant, and even the Inner Focus rework that allowed for tons of physical attackers from old generations to still be strong today. I honestly believe that had Megas just been foregone in favor of rebalancing the game, many of the low tier your Pokemon today would be a lot stronger. But then again, these designs absolutely slap and it'd be a waste not to use them. So how can Mega Pokemon be implemented in a way that doesn't mess with game balance? I'm partial to Mega Pokemon remaining a staple of the single player games, like the Pokemon Legends series. The fact that these games are single player only is a huge reason I found it so enjoyable. I didn't need to worry about optimizing my team for battling other players or constructing the absolutely best moveset possible. I was able to just run some old favorites of mine like Carnivine, which I'd never be able to run in an online situation. The endgame reward for these games as well was really cool as the Legends plate made it so Arceus would be able to hit everything for super effective always. This obviously wouldn't be allowed in a PvP setting. Imagine switching in your normal resist only to get hit by fighting type judgment. In this environment though, I would absolutely love for Megas to return, since in a single player game, there's not really as strict of a reason to need to balance them. It's honestly kind of a no-brainer that Game Freak would seize this opportunity to reintroduce them into the franchise given the success of the single player Pokemon Legends Arceus. 
That and it helps them get the rest of the Mega Evolution merch off the shelf. Somewhere in a Walmart warehouse, there's like a hundred Mega bracelets that were just never sold rotting. But let's say that Game Freak decides to reintroduce Megas not only to Pokemon Legends ZA, but also into Generation 10. Well, Generation 7 proved to us that Megas can coexist with other mechanics like Z-Moves, so I could reasonably believe that Game Freak could include Megas with whatever new thing we end up getting in Generation 10. But a few steps need to be taken to avoid having Megas be an over-centralizing mechanic like they were in years past. If Megas return, I think that the flat 100 base stat increase across the board shouldn't be standard. There was no reason for Mega Metagross to have 700 base stat total. A stat rework could be implemented to these stronger Megas to give them minor buffs in exchange for not being able to run an item. That inability to run items like the safety goggles, leftovers, or a life orb should feel like a real drawback and make people second guess if they prefer the Mega or the item. Beyond that, if new Megas were introduced, the vast majority of them should go to the lower tier Pokemon that need a bit of a buff in power. Obviously, we can still do something for the fans of the powerful Pokemon like Ursaluna, but whatever Megas those Pokemon end up getting, they should really just be limited to minor upgrades. I know you need to sell merch Pokemon, so go ahead and give us like Mega Charizard Z or whatever like busted Pokemon needs to have that extra little bit of money behind it. Finally, I genuinely think that with the advent of open team sheets being standard for the VGC format, items should be visible on in-game team preview. This would allow for both players to identify which Pokemon was holding the Mega Stone more reliably and allow for open team sheets formats to be introduced in some way to the in-game ladder, bridging the gap between the competitive and casual players just a bit. If even just one or two of these steps were taken when reintroducing Introducing Megas to PvP battles, I think that Megas could be a great introduction to the game. So what's the verdict? Should Megas return? If you ask me, I think they should be a staple of purely the single player games, but they need to be heavily reworked in any games that plan to include ranked competitive battles. But what do you think about Mega Pokemon? I want to know your opinion in the comment section down below. Should they return to competitive play, or are you fine with just keeping them in single player games and spin-offs? Let me know. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like and subscribe, it'd mean the world to me. If you want to support me further, you can also check out my Patreon page or become a YouTube channel member by clicking the join button below the video. This gets you a sneak peek at future videos and even some bonus content. You'll also see your name at the end of all my videos like these people. A special thanks to my most boosted supporters, Avatar67, Kanor, Narwiz, Jordan Harridge, and Halo for their generous pledges. Another way to support the channel is to check out the videos on the playlist on screen right now. I know you'll find something that you'll enjoy in there. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.